Well, and I think you mentioned that very illustratively during Ehrlich's raid against Washington of like how many, how few soldiers actually make it to mm -hmm. Fort Stevens. And in, in, in part, it's the lux and also of the weather that delays him yeah. by a day mm -hmm. that allows the troops from, Virginia, from Petersburg to arrive in time. So that's sort of what we talked about, so what you mentioned, the uh, Peninsula campaign, a lot of like how it impacts military operations. That's another great example. I saw it that. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, I mean, the weather's pushing 100 degrees when early is approaching Washington after Monocacy. If, if you've got, you know, 85 degree weather, he gets there a day early. He gets there with more men. And maybe he gets into the city for a few hours. I don't think he's going to hold Washington for very long. Yeah. I mean, stop and imagine how that would embarrass the Lincoln administration in an election year if the Capitol is occupied even for a few hours. Um, but it doesn't happen because it's just beastly hot and it's dusty. That's part of the march that we forget about, these massive dust clouds. If, mm -hmm. if a Civil War army marched by our house right now, in the middle of summer at least, you might not be able to see them very well because they would have dust all around them from the roads. I mean, so there's an example where, where weather conditions change the war in some ways.